How to use a first aid kit. What your first aid course didn't teach you. Brought to you by Heart to Heart First Aid and CPR Services and FirstAidCPRProducts.com. Having a first aid kit is an important part of being prepared for any emergency situation. Keep a first aid kit easily accessible and fully stocked, and remember to replace used and outdated contents regularly. Hi, my name is Nick Ranonelli, and I'm here to show you how to use some of the standard contents of a first aid kit. Let's begin by getting familiar with some of the standard contents of a first aid kit. A first aid kit should contain an instant cold compress, scissors, disposable gloves, adhesive tape, antiseptic wipes, triangular bandages, roller bandages, sterile gauze pads, adhesive bandages, antibiotic ointment, trauma pads, latex-free elastic wrap, pressure bandage, tweezers, and an emergency blanket. Some first aid kits also contain breathing barriers used when giving rescue breaths for CPR. Protective equipment. Gloves are an essential part of any first aid kit. Use gloves whenever possible while performing first aid. Gloves help to keep a barrier between you and potentially infectious bodily fluids. To correctly remove gloves, peel the first glove off from the wrist, turning it inside out. To remove the second glove, grab it from the inside at the wrist and roll it off, making sure you do not come into contact with the outer surface. Use a biohazard bag for any contaminated materials. For broken glass or for needles, a Sharps disposal container should be used. Contact your local health authority to learn how to properly dispose of these materials. CPR breathing barriers are used to protect the rescuer when giving rescue breaths. It will help prevent blood, saliva or vomit from getting into the rescuer's mouth. A pocket mask is 90% more effective than mouth to mouth. To use it, simply place the mask over the person's nose and mouth, ensure you have a tight seal. Open their airway and ventilate. Each breath should last one second. For a baby or a child, you can still use a pocket mask. Simply invert the pocket mask so that the point of the barrier is toward their chin. Secure and ventilate. Some types of disposable barriers come complete with non-latex gloves, antiseptic wipes, and the breathing barrier. To use a disposable breathing barrier, simply take the mouthpiece and place it inside the person's mouth. Peel back the plastic, tilt their head back, and then ventilate. Minor Cuts and Scrapes For minor cuts and scrapes, follow these first aid steps. Clean, treat, cover, and protect. Germs usually enter the body through a natural orifice, such as the nose or mouth, but they can also enter the body through a break in the skin. In the case of minor wounds, where there is only surface damage and little bleeding, wash the wound with soap and water. If possible, rinse the wound for five minutes with clean, running water. You can also use antiseptics found in a first aid kit to clean wounds. Antibiotics are used for treating cleansed injuries before applying bandages and covering in first aid. Apply an antibiotic cream if the person has no allergy to it. For smaller wounds, use a simple adhesive bandage that can come in all different shapes and sizes. The knuckle bandage is shaped like the letter H. A knuckle bandage is placed over the top of the knuckle to treat a typical knuckle cut or scrape. The four adhesive strips are wrapped around the finger above and below the knuckle. This allows the joint to bend without interfering with the bandage's position. To properly apply a fingertip bandage, first stick one end of the bandage to the finger, then pull it over the fingernail and secure the flaps in place. Two of the most important items in any first aid kit are gauze pads and gauze rolls. 
Square gauze pads come in different sizes, so use the appropriate size to cover a wound. Use a gauze roller bandage to secure the dressing in place. You can even use first aid tape to secure all four sides of a square gauze pad. Basic first aid tape is found in almost any first aid kit or cabinet. It can stick easily and can be torn without scissors. Use first aid scissors to cut tape or bandages at an appropriate length. Here are some examples of different first aid scissors and shears. These scissors are designed to protect the skin while removing clothing or cutting bandages, wraps, or tapes. When do we need stitches? Stitches are usually needed when there is a complete separation of both skin layers, the edges of the skin do not fall together, and the wound is larger than a half to one inch. If you anticipate a delay in getting the person to the hospital, use Steri strips or butterfly bandages to help keep the skin flaps together and bandage as usual. Impaled object. For minor impaled objects like a splinter, use tweezers to help remove the object. You can use specific products like Splinter Out. It's better than a needle because it's sterile and has a point that is designed for loosening and pulling out splinters. There are a variety of tweezers to choose from. Some even come with a magnifying glass. Major external bleeding. Major bleeding can be life-threatening as it reduces the blood flow to the vital organs and can result in death. To treat major external bleeding, apply direct pressure to the area with a sterile dressing or clean cloth. Secure the dressing in place with a bandage. Bleeding from an artery is profuse and life-threatening. Since arterial blood is oxygenated, it appears bright red in color and will spurt to the beat of the heart. Therefore, it is imperative that we direct pressure immediately using bulky dressings, as severe bleeding can cause rapid shock and is more difficult to control. Severe injuries require special consideration. These products are designed to stem heavy blood loss. Direct pressure to the area to control the bleeding. If bandage becomes blood soaked, do not remove it and simply add another dressing in place. Here we have an abdominal pad, we have trauma dressings, we have the blood stopper, and my favorite is a pressure bandage, which is a dressing and a bandage all in one. Shock. Extensive internal or external bleeding can cause the person to go into shock. The loss of blood leads to low blood volume and decreased oxygen supply to the vital organs. Elevate the legs above the level of the heart. Cover the person with a solar or emergency blanket to maintain normal body temperature. An emergency blanket can reflect back 90% of the body's heat. Amputations. If a body part has been completely cut off, direct pressure and control the bleeding. Find the body part and wrap it in sterile gauze or a clean cloth. Place the wrapped body part in a bag of ice and seek medical attention immediately as they may be able to reattach the amputation. Closed wounds. In the case of a minor closed wound, Cold can help control both pain and swelling. To use an instant cold pack, first shake, squeeze to break the inner bag, shake to mix, and apply. No barrier between the instant cold pack and skin is needed. Cold can also be used to treat a bone, muscle, or joint injury. To review how to use an instant cold pack, simply shake, squeeze to break the inner bag so the contents can mix, and apply. The elastic ice securing wrap is ideal for holding ice or hot or cold compresses in place over an injury. 
cool the affected area for 20 minutes every hour for the first 24 to 48 hours. Let's learn how to apply a sling. Triangular bandages are commonly found in first aid kits and can be used to provide immobilization and support to an upper body injury. For upper body injuries, you can apply a sling. Place a triangular bandage underneath the injured arm. The top point of the triangle should be towards the injured elbow. Wrap bandage securely to support the injured body part. Tie both ends of the bandage behind the neck. Twist or pin excess bandage around the elbow. Make sure the sling covers the entire arm with fingers slightly exposed. For extra support, secure a broad transport bandage to stabilize the sling. A latex-free elastic wrap is another product used to provide immobilization and support. Wrap the bandage from below the injury working upwards while maintaining tension throughout. Use the clips provided to pin the bandage in place. There are a variety of splints that are designed to immobilize smaller body parts. To immobilize an injured finger, Place a tongue depressor underneath the finger and use first aid tape to secure the splint in place. Burns A first degree burn damages only the top layer of skin and can be painful and may swell. A second degree burn damages both layers of the skin. The burned skin is red and has blisters that may be open and leaking fluid. Scarring may occur. A third degree burn destroys both layers of the skin as well as nerves, blood vessels, fat, muscle and bone. The skin may be charred black or even white. Cool the burn with water for at least 15 minutes until the pain stops. Once you've cooled the burn, Apply a burn cream to relieve pain and prevent infection. To further protect the area, cover the burn with a dry, non-stick sterile dressing. Burns are one of the most serious types of injuries. Therefore, we have a vast selection of burn treatment products. First Aid Burn Creams incorporate both antiseptic and healing properties in a single product. Burn kits contain the basic necessities for specific burn care emergencies. Our kits include burn dressing, first aid tape and sterile gauze rolls, exam quality gloves, and nickel plated scissors. Heat shields and fire blankets are wrapped around a burn victim. They are used to stop the burn progression, ease the pain, and protect against airborne contamination. The American Red Cross Burn Emergency Responder Packs include essential supplies to treat and protect minor burns. Its lightweight design makes it easy to grab, pack, and carry. Our burn spray and burn pump spray with aloe vera work to relieve the pain of minor burns, abrasions, scalds, even sunburns, while also disinfecting the area. Burn gels are used to soothe and cool minor burns. Gels form a protective sterile layer while moisturizing the skin for fast pain relief. Sterile burn dressings come in various sizes and help to prevent burn progression without using water. A burn dressing protects from contamination while it cools, comforts, and relieves pain. Frostbite. Depending on the circumstances and time of exposure, frostbite may occur by itself or along with hypothermia. Frostbite can occur in body parts that are exposed to extreme cold. The water in the skin freezes and swells, causing cells to die. Deep frostbite can lead to the loss of body parts. Gradually warm the body part by gently immersing the affected area in warm water until it appears and feels normal. Place gauze or cotton between the fingers and toes. Bandage the area with dry sterile dressings and see a doctor. Ideal for cold weather activities, our sports heat body warmer provides safe and instant heat in convenient, air-activated packages that fit easily into pockets, 
liners, and wraps. The Ready Wash self-heating washcloths feature a self-warming system that allows the washcloths to heat without the need of a heat source. The super soft cloths are hypoallergenic, latex, and alcohol-free. For more information on CPR and first aid procedures, check out our comprehensive, full-length DVD series on first aid and CPR. For more information or to order any of the products featured in this video, please visit us at firstaidcprproducts.com. That's where you'll find our DVDs, our online workplace health and safety courses, and over 4,500 first aid and other health and safety related products. My name is Nick Rondinelli and thank you for watching.